Here's a quick look at Russia and their civil society and the cleavages within their civil society. First off, um, we have to look at the idea of statism. Um, so despite a lot of Russians mistrust in or not trusting the government, uh, Russian citizens still rely a lot on their government. Uh, and this has to do with the idea they came from that communist and command economy structure. So it's a holdover from those Soviet days. One of the things in civil society that they saw in uh, 2000 was that uh, there were more deaths than births in Russia. Uh, so their population was dwindling. Uh, and then in 2007, uh, Russia comes out with a kind of a bonus. So Putin announced a baby bonus, basically like $9,000 for second and further birth. So they would get paid that uh, if they were having more children. Uh, in 2007 then, the births jumped to 1.6 million uh, from the 1.4 million the previous year. So uh, there was some incentives there. Again, they were having a lot more deaths than births. Uh, Putin also did this. This is a story to share um, in 2013. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, has long been at war with the country's plummeting birth rate with a concert of measures uh, designed to boost his com compatriots' alien sex drive. So, But it seems he has added a new secret weapon to his arsenal, a weapon known as Boys to Men. Putin apparently hopes to harness the all-American boy band's raw romantic charm through a gig in Moscow to encourage their legions of Russian fans to reproduce ahead of Valentine's Day to songs such as I'll Make Love to You and On a Bended Knee. The boy band made up of Morris, uh, two Morris's, Stockman, uh, will serenade Russians in a series of concerts as part of Putin's continuing PR campaign to persuade the population to have more children. As Russia, Russia's population continues to fall to record lows, Putin's continuing PR campaign to persuade the population to have more children appears to have stalled until now. So Putin was hiring boys to men to perform a concert. Uh, it's in 2011, Putin announced also to invest $53 billion to help raise reproduction rates. And he wanted to boost those by 25%. So just some tactics he used to increase the population besides monetary incentives. Yeah, so there's kind of the growth there over the years. Now looking at some uh, cleavages within Russia, we have 81% uh, identify as Russian, 3% as Ukrainian, 3.8% as Tatar. Uh, then there's other numerous ethnicities and races within Russia. Um, again, some have developed nationalist aspirations. Different portions of Russia want to uh, get out. There's the Caucasus area in the southwest Russia, um, and there's also different you know, customs and religions and things that um, want to get out as well. So there's different parts here. If you look at Ossetia right here, that's a different area. Chechnya will be uh, something we will talk about as well. So in Chechia, uh, Chechnya, uh, when the USSR collapsed, there was eth different ethnic regions that broke away and tried to form own independent countries. Uh, Chechnya did not break away, even though they wanted to, and it's predominantly Muslim population. Um, within Chechnya, the, the Russian military has been put there. There's Chechnyan rebels. Uh, they destroy, they kill civilians, it's somewhat like a terrorist organization. Uh, there has been truces that have been declared. Um, and it's somewhat independent, but still controlled by Russia. So in Chechnya in 1999, Russia reinvaded, uh, and they controlled, but they didn't have order. Um, there's many terrorist attacks within that region. Uh, and in 2004, the biggest one was the seizure of a Russian school that left about 350 dead. Here's a little report on that, those attacks. So that school was seized multiple days. Uh, there were 
many soldiers that had to come in, uh, but many children died. Uh, and there's the after effects uh, where, you know, on, on that day they don't go to school anymore in that area. Uh, it's kind of somewhat a holiday. A lot of people lost loved ones. Uh, so in 2007, Chechnya's people voted uh, on a Kremlin-endorsed referendum. So they looked at uh, having a new constitution that was approved by their Chechen voters. Uh, states that it's inseparable part of Russia, so it's still part of Ruff uh, Russia. But they do have their own president that can make some decisions. Uh, still, there's suicide tax, killings, and kidnappings that are common in that area. Uh, then within Georgia, uh, so you have a country outside of Russia here. Uh, in 2008, there was an invasion. Uh, since its independence in 1991, Georgia has long been viewed by Moscow as a province of Russia, but Georgia has sought ties with the U.S. to be an independent country. Uh, there's some areas of Georgia um, in um, the southern portion of Sessia where uh, they wanted to break away from Georgia. Uh, so, again... There are some areas that are grieving with Georgia and part of that country. Others are not. So Russia helps South Ossetia by invading that area. Uh, a ceasefire was then had to kind of be um, discussed with France, and it was brokered, and the EU got involved as well. At the time, Putin was not president, but uh, Mendeviv was. Uh, designed a decree recognizing the southern portion as an independent state. The northern portion is still within Russia. Yeah, so here's kind of that conflict that go, went on. Uh, this is kind of what the world reacts. Uh, again, it's dreadful, but don't anger the Russians. We need their gas so people aren't too concerned about these people living there. Uh, NATO was talking about it could be worse if Georgia were a NATO member. We'd have to do something, so they're not going to help out. The UN, uh, they're too busy for a meeting. Looking at cable news in the United States, John Edwards' love child had no comment about Georgia. So that was when John Edwards' politician was being kind of investigated about uh, a different another child that he might have had. Uh, the president, I told my buddy Putin to knock it off. Mission accomplished. Now let's go play some volleyball. And then your average American, there's Russians in Atlanta thinking that Georgia... They were talking about the state. So not much um, global attention being uh, paid uh, when Russia is invading this area. Other cleavages. Uh, Russian Orthodox is the primary uh, religion. A lot of atheists. There's some Protestant Muslims as well. A lot of times they um, identify as Russian Orthodox but don't really actually participate. And there's a high level of atheism because on the communist days they didn't really allow any practice of religion. So looking at the uh, law that kind of limits the new formation of religions in Russia, 1997 favors the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, Yeltsin and Putin, they try to make it appear that they have close ties um, to kind of do ceremonies and things like that. Um, when there was a protest recently um, about Putin, the church initial seemed sympathetic to the Russian people, but then they came out and supported Putin. Again, that was probably by pressure uh, by the government. Uh, the Russian Orthodox Church uh, is in public schools, even though the Constitution in 1993 states that it uh, should be a secular state. No religion may be instituted as state-sponsored or mandatory religion. Uh, religious associations shall be separated from the state and shall be equal before the law. But Putin kind of says... Uh, they should know their history and their roots, and then it plays a role, so they put it into schools anyway. Other uh, religions that operate, there's Lutheran uh, religions. Again, there's a, a picture of a Lutheran priest kind of having a home service, um, and they're supporting the Methodist group as well, which was recently shut down. So again, uh, a lot of these sometimes are shut down when they're not supposed to be operating. So this is the Methodist congregation. Uh, he, this individual tried to register his local church. He had to be registered with the government, uh, was rejected, lost his appeal. Uh, then now he could face arrest for any kind of religious activities. Other things in civil society in Russia, private organizations, associations outside of government that play a role, again, are what your uh, what you look at for a strong civil society. It's very weak, however, in Russia. Uh, it's not just because it's kind of like the church, um, other organizations that couldn't operate under the communist system, 
so there was no organization or foundations there. Uh, they don't belong to any types of cultural or charitable clubs, organizations. And a lot of them, most people, only 1% actually identify or belong to a political party. So if the government doesn't like a particular group, it investigates them, uh, doesn't allow them to register, harasses them, maybe some more media harassment as well. Uh, also, the Kremlin, which is the government in Russia, um, they will pressure non-government uh, organizations, uh, NGOs, that are from outside the country, like the Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International. Uh, they pressure them. Uh, they don't allow them to really operate and research what's in their country. Another organization which strengthens the government, um, and it's in a way somewhat uh, civil society, but it's kind of it functions through the government and the political parties and run by uh, Putin, funded by the Kremlin. It's Nashi, so it's an organization uh, that has mass marches and demonstrations. They oppose uh, the other political parties. Um, but they usually support Putin. Okay, a lot of these are younger individuals as well to keep that um, system going, keep that political party strong. Uh, in media, so again, they had the Pravada, uh, official paper of the USSR, which was a communist paper. Uh, now it's kind of an independent newspaper, more of a tabloid, so not run by the government. Uh, and Putin has a tight control over the press. Uh, they use a state-controlled company to take over a lot of the independent networks. Um, again, when a, a individual from maybe the national TV network uh, goes to another network, uh, the government will tend to shut it down or censor it. And if you look at some of the journalists, they've been found to be poisoned, executed, exiled. Uh, put in jail for many different things. Uh, the Beslan school siege, if you look at that, there was some coverage by the national media, but then they went back to regular programming. So again, they're censoring what's going on in the country um, and not allowing journalists to operate and freely do their job.